G'day, I'm Clive and welcome. I'm back out for a couple of days bushwalking on the Bibbleman Trek. And this video is going to be a little bit different. It'll be a bit of behind the scenes because normally it's just me walking a section or showing you around a campsite. So I thought, okay, this one, I'll show you some of the gear I'm using. A couple of bits I'm testing out, which has made the pack a bit heavier. But it's going to be over the two days and it's going to be over 30 kilometers or over 20 miles in length total and I don't know if you can see it but just behind us there is Mount Cook and if I'm right I think the elevation is 641 meters high so we'll be walking over that today just been dropped off by Albany Highway and walking up to a shelter called Mount Cook Shelter named after Mount Cook and the Mount Cook Shelter is part of the Bibbleman track and you've got a three-sided cabin there you've got rainwater tanks uh, you've got little tent pitches and a little bit further back, going heading north, you've got the Mount Cook Group campsite. <coughs> no actual shelter, but there is an undercover area where you can all gather in there. If I remember, there's about four picnic benches in there, some on the outside, two drop toilets. So, uh, yeah, rainwater tanks too. So the groups will go to the group campsite, that's why it's called a group campsite. But then you've got the actual original campsite, which is actually rebuilt because uh, the first one got burnt down in a bush fire. But if you look around, even though it's been a fair few years now, this is just what it looks like after bushfires and people think they've gone forever. But they're not. It's, it's part of the the cycle here in the Australian bush. The fires come through, it actually helps some of the plants to germinate or the seeds to open up and saplings to start growing and then new shoots on the trees. <coughs> but yeah that's got the uh, drop toilet there as well, the Mount Cook campsite, rainwater tanks, tent pitches, three-sided shelter and that's actually at the foot of Mount Cook. So as soon as you start walking out there, you've got this nice gentle incline and then it goes up and up and up. So climbing up this side isn't as bad. The last time I did it, it was a bit wet and trying to walk down the granite on the other side was the awkward part. But there we have got to climb up and over that. I'll show you some of the shots from up there because it's just fantastic, it is the views. And then we'll be heading down to the Narang Shelter, which is, I think, I can't remember if it's 12 or 14 kilometres from the Mount Cook Group or Mount Cook Shelter, up and over to Narang. And then the following day, including walking out from the following shelter to the pickup point, which is by the old North Bannister Roadhouse. That's about another 16 kilometers, so, but that's not too bad, that's fairly level. Okay, I'll see you in a little while.
a bit fed up walking on the track so it's hard to do a bit of bush bashing. It's a lot nicer. Hey, okay. heading that way. So if anybody at the shelter they might be surprised seeing somebody come out of the bush and I'm walking off the track. In the beginning of October, so uh, all the snakes here in Australia are starting to come out. So, I'm going to keep my eyes open a bit, especially walking through these bushes and stepping over the logs. There you go, coming out at the shelter. Actually coming out right by the dunny, the drop toilet. That's a lot nicer than going down one of these roads. So these roads, access roads, they just get a bit boring. So where possible, get into somewhere to start. Something going, going through something like that is nice. Was out and we're heading up Mount Cook. The elevation already is about 106 meters, and what's that? That gives us about another five, four, about 460, 470 meters in elevation to go. And in the next shelter, I think it's about 12, 13 kilometers away now. I love the views on the top of here. Okay, let's get on. That's the tent up. The Lanshan 2, and I've got the four season stroke winter tent in it. Uh, the forecast weather to get down to about 5 degrees centigrade, maybe a little bit less. Uh, I don't know if it will because it's been a lovely day all day today, about 25 it's been. So, Let's get all my gear out. Okay, street sleep mat I bought is the Thermoest Ultralight Insulator tonight. 
a 3.1 R value. So even if it does get real cold, that should be more than enough. And you need to hike down booties. Food if you get hungry. Cook kit. Okay, thermal base layer. What else we got in there? Chill out. That's a sea to summit. Can't remember which one it is, but it's the large size. Or is it a medium? Medium, large, one or the other. Medium, I'd say. No, that's the large one. That is the large one. And the thing taking up most of the space in the pack is the Snug Pack Softy Elite 3. And because they said the temperature is going to be low, I brought this along to finish my test. I've been testing it now for 12 months off camera. So it will be. A review being made of that when I get home. It's my hygiene kit. Apart from my tripod for one of my cameras, that's empty. Okay. Let's get this sleep mat pumped up. I've got the, the old flex tail. I've had another two out since this one. I'll still do a review of it because I think it's good. Keep the tent tidy if I think back in the back, uh, backpack. I'll just keep out what I need. Hey, it's warm in here. This campsite is ticks everywhere. I've killed four kangaroo ticks, which uh, if you're in England, about the same size as a uh, five pence piece or a five cents piece here in Australia. <sighs> Flies are crazy. And the tent went up pretty easy. Plenty of room. I'm glad I got this door open because this stuff here it blocks any breeze coming in. So there's a group of folks down near where the fire is ready. So I'm going to head down there and spend some time with them guys and then I'll come back later. Another tick gone. Not a happy one now. I'll check again later. Okay, bedtime nearly. Just spent a couple of hours chatting and sitting around the fire. 
nice night, good people. Now, I'm exhausted. I'm sitting in this tent, the Lanshan 2. I've got no drafts coming through. I feel a little bit at the vents at the top. They said it's going to be in the low single digits, temperature wise, in Celsius or centigrade, whatever you want to call it. So I've got the Snug Pack Softy Elite 3, which we've been testing now, like I said earlier, for over a year. So let's do the final test tonight on it. So, good night, everybody. See you in the morning. Good morning everyone, uh, back on track, We're down to about 5 degrees last night, and we've got a lot of condensation in the tent, uh, it's just shoved in the, what do you call it, the pouch on the back of the bag here, so I better drive through the day, I'm going to get home later tonight, hang it up outside, check it for ticks, and then pack it back up. Left about quarter past six this morning. This is what it's like now at half past eight. And the track's a little bit flatter today. No mountaining on it. So hopefully I'll be able to get a better pace. Yeah. I was a bit cold last night with the sleeping bag I took with me. So when I get home one day in the week I'm going to actually do a review of it and give you my honest opinion, how I coped with it, in what situations. Yeah. So I won't, I won't say much more, so you can watch the video later. But yeah, about a third of the way through the walk today. So I'm pretty happy. I've stopped once to take my base layer off and my jacket off. It's way too warm within like half an hour of walking. But a great gang there, there was people from uh, Turkey, France, uh, Italy, and a good old Aussie guy there, and myself. So, it's quite entertaining, good fun. Okay, I'll see you a little bit later on.